Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to learn what a transform is and what it's used for. Let's begin. So, a transform is the main way to move, rotate, and scale game objects in your scene. Every game object has a transform by default. Let's go in the scene hierarchy in here and create a new game object. Here in the inspector, you can see it automatically added the transform component. Every game object always has a transform component. Here you can see the three main values for the transform, the position, the rotation, and the scale. They are represented as a vector three, so they have an X, a Y, and a Z value. Let's add a sprite renderer so we can see the result of modifying the transform. So add component, sprite, renderer. I'm going to drag this sprite in here so we can see visually our game object. So here's the sprite, and up here I can change the transform. Changing the position will move the sprite on the x-axis. I can change it on the y-axis. And since I have this scene set up in 2D, you normally would not modify the z-axis since that would be towards and away from the camera. So in 2D, you'd simply leave this at zero. I can also rotate my sprite, however, again, since this is in 2D, you normally would only rotate the z-axis, which would provide that rotation. The X and Y would apply some rotation that is only applicable in a 3D environment. The scale modifies the size of the game object. Using a sprite render means that the size of this object that you can see in here is dependent on the settings of the sprite when imported. So in here, as you can see, this spaceship sprite has a size of 64 by 64, and in pixels per unit, I've selected 64. That means 64 pixels in this texture will equal one unit in game. So as you can see, this texture is 64 by 64 using 64 pixels per unit means that the sprite by default will be one by one. And as you can see the size, it is in one by one unit right there. And if I modify the scale, it will modify according to that sprite scale. So I can modify the X, I can modify the Y, and again, I can modify the Z, but since this is in 2D, let's leave that at one. One more thing that is related to transforms and the sprites is when you import a sprite, you can modify the pivot. The pivot will affect how the sprite rotates. So by default, it's in the center, but let's say I would put the pivot back here, hit apply, and now if I rotate on the Z axis, you can see that it rotated around that pivot. Okay, so that's movement, rotation, and scale of a single transform. You can also parent various transforms. So let's go in our hierarchy and duplicate our current game object. And let's make the second one a child of the first game object. Move it to the side so you can see it. So this in here, let me tend so you can easily see, this is the child game object. Now, when I modify the parent, you can see that those changes are also applied to the child. So if I move, both of them move. If I rotate, both of them rotate. And if I scale, both of them scale. On the inspector, what you see are the local transform values and not the global values. So if I go into the child game object, you can see that the values in here are represented in the local position space. So let's put this one on one and zero. If I put my parent on two zero, then the world position of this one is on three zero, but it shows one zero. Again, this is the local and not the global position. This difference between local and global space is very important to fully understand. The same thing is applied to the rotation and scale. What you see here are the local values, and if you apply them outside, you will still see the local values in here. All right, so that's what we can do with the transform from the editor. Now let's write some code. Let's make a new C Sharp script and let's name it transform test. We're going to add this script to the parent transform and let's rename this to sprite and here a child transform just to have more proper names to deal through code. With our script running on the parent, let's go into the code and in here you can access the transform component by simply writing transform. So let's make a debug.log of the transform and see if it correctly prints out our transform object. Yep, in the console, as you can see, our current transform has the name of sprite and it is of type unityengine.transform. 
So let's modify the transform position. We do that by going into the transform.position, which will set the transform global position. And we're going to put it on vector three, let's say one, zero, zero. So as you can see, our transform is on two, zero, zero. And if we run the code, as soon as it starts, you can see that it was repositioned to one, zero, zero. So now let's move our transform on update. So let's copy this in here and we're going to set our transform.position to transform.position plus a new vector three of let's say 0.01 per frame. So essentially every single frame, we're going to move this transform 0.01 to the right side since we are moving on the X axis in here. So let's test. Yep, there you go. As you can see, the spaceship is moving and the child game object, as you can see, is moving with it. Now, there are many ways to rotate a transform depending on if you're working in 2D or 3D. For me, since I work in 2D, the easiest way is to modify transform.euler angles. So let's do a transform.euler angles, which again are represented as a new vector 3. And again, if you remember, in 2D, we only want to modify the Z value. So let's do the same thing we did previously and increase the Euler angles by 0.1 F every frame. So this should make our sprite rotate continuously. Yep, as you can see, the sprite is rotating on the Z axis. So finally, we can modify the scale of our transform by going to transform.localScale and we're going to do the same thing, set the local scale to local scale plus a vector three. And let's increase by 0 0.01, 0 0.01 also on the Y and zero on the Z. So this should increase the size of our transform whilst maintaining the aspect ratio. Yep, there you go. You can see the scale increasing per frame. So now we have a sprite that is changing position, moving to the right side, changing rotation by rotating and also changing the scale. Those are the three main properties of a transform. So all these values that you see in here are global values. There is a second set of variables to handle local values. For position set of transform.position, you have transform.local position. For the rotation, you have local Euler angles or local rotation if you want to deal with quaternions. And for the local scale, you have the local scale. So as we saw previously, the inspector displays the local values of that transform. On the child in here, you can see the local position. It is on one zero zero. And we can see that through code. Let's go into our start. And first of all, in order to access the transform of the child, we use transform.find. And then we find the name of our transform, which in this case, child transform. This is the reference to our child transform. So now with that child transform, let's print out the local and global position. So let's do a debug.log of the local position, which should display exactly the same as we see in the inspector and the position which should show something different. And let's stop moving the parent on start. All right, so let's see what these two values are displaying. As you can see in the console, the local value is 100, but the global value is 300. So the local matches what you see in the inspector, but the global is different. If we were to set the parent to 000, then the local would be the same as the global. So there you have it. We covered what is a transform and all the ways we can modify it both in the editor and through code. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.